So I was surprised. And I think that's the first the first point to make is that uh, this was unexpected. And I think a lot of people who had been following this issue or you know really care about this issue were surprised. There hadn't been much discussion about going back retroactively and changing the stage two rules. Uh, there hadn't been discussion in the policy committee in any of the usual open fora that had suggested that this might be in the offing. So the first reaction was surprise. Uh, the second reaction was my thinking about this was a little bit of disappointment because we actually had this experience. We tried this approach a few years ago where for the first stage of meaningful use uh, we had set a policy that said uh, hospitals should make discharge summaries available to patients upon request. Make it available and see what happens. And well, what we saw happen was two-thirds of hospitals, 66.4 percent to be exact, qualified for that measure with an exclusion that was not a single patient requested their cop discharge summaries electronically. So what we learned from that is making something theoretically available without actually advocating for it, without putting it into workflows, without making some representation to the patient that it actually is available, doesn't work. On the other hand, what we've seen with New York Presbyterian and other hospitals, where when you do incorporate just a little bit into workflows, that the rate of adoption of these goes way above 5%, right? So that to me was the disappointment, was that this was just as it felt like we are getting more and more uh, providers and hospitals putting in the workflows to actively promote the availability of electronic information to patients that the rug in a, in a sense seemed like it was pulled out from, from under this. So that having been said, so I was obviously disappointed and I've generally been, I think, pretty good about not, you know, there's a new crew that have to deal with the realities of operating a program and they know a lot more than I do about what's going on today. So I have, I have a huge amount of deference to the regulators. I know what it's like to be in their shoes. I don't want to second guess, but on this issue, I just felt a little, um, uncomfortable not saying something. Where I think there is legitimate concern is we can't be, the term I use is pushing rope only. There also has to be a demand side. We need to work not only on the availability and the promotion of this, it's critical, but there also needs to be the demand side. And I'm not you know, I, I think we need to, yes, people who care about this issue need to make their voices heard around the, the proposed rule and the 60-day comment period and so forth, but we also need a parallel movement to create demand for this. And every one of us, me, you, him, her, you, right, every one of us should go online and try to get our own records, right? I should go to my health plan and say, gee, under HIPAA, I have a right to my records in electronic format. I would like to exercise that right, please. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens if more and more people are aware of their rights and demand their rights. And if they say, well, it's not quite available, say, why not? Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, push it a little further, maybe go to the Office of Civil Rights, maybe figure out if there is a mismatch between what our rights are in theory and what our rights are in practice. And let's drive some demand into what people are saying, well, you know, we make it available and no one asks. Right. Let's ask. And I think the idea of working up to a single day when we have a million people go online and ask for their records online would be very powerful and would be a day where everyone could get geared up and we could so go work through a lot of the issues uh, that providers legitimately have, covered entities legitimately have, but let there be no longer an excuse that says patients don't actually want this.